Hotet brothers and sisters and welcome to floor 23 of Oran's Black Museum, here on floor 23, we will be looking at the early participation of black African Americans in sports and collectibles. Enjoy, have fun. Thank you, God bless you. And may the rest of your life be the best of your life. Oran D. Belgrave Sr. In 1991, Namibian, formerly Southwest Africa, Frankie Fredericks became the first sub-10 second 100 meters runner of non-West African heritage and in 2003 Australia's Patrick Johnson, who is Irish and indigenous Australian heritage, became the first to achieve the feat without an African background. In 2010, Frenchman Christophe Lemaitre became the first white European under 10 seconds, although Poland's Marion Waronin had unofficially surpassed the barrier with a time of 9.992 seconds in 1984. In 2011, Zimbabwean Gonitz Ashmakusha became the 76th man to break the barrier, yet only the fourth man not of West African descent. No sprinter from South Asia, East Africa or North Africa has officially achieved this feat. In 2015 Su Bingshan of China became the first ethnic East Asian athlete to officially break the 10 seconds barrier and British athlete Adam Jamili, who is of mixed Iranian and Moroccan descent, became the first athlete with either North African or Middle Eastern heritage to break the 10 second barrier. Before the 2004 Athens Games, 494 of the top 500 times for the 100 meters were held by sprinters who were of West African descent. Endurance Running Many nilotic groups also excel in long and middle distance running. John Antine has argued that this sporting prowess stems from their exceptional running economy this in turn is a function of slim body morphology and slender legs, a preponderance of slow twitch muscle fibers, a low heart rate gained from living at high altitude as well as a culture of running to school from a young age. A study by Pitsilides et al. 2006, questioning 404 elite distance runners from Kenya found that 76% of the international class respondents hailed from the Collingian ethnic group and that 79% spoke an ilotic language. Joseph L. Graves argues that Kenyan athletes from the African Great Lakes region who have done well in long-distance running all have come from high-altitude areas, whereas those from low-altitude areas do not perform particularly well. He also argues that Koreans and Ecuadorians from high-altitude areas compete well with Kenyans in long-distance races. According to Graves, this suggests that it is the fact of having trained in a high altitude, combined with possible local-level physiological adaptations to high-altitude environments that is behind the success in long-distance running, not race. Graves also argues that while it is superficially true that most of the world record holders in the 100-meter dash are of West African heritage, they also all have partial genetic heritage from Europe and Native America, they have also all trained outside of West Africa, and West African nations have not trained any top-level runners. Graves says these factors make it impossible to say to which degree the success is best attributed to genetic or to environmental factors. Views in the United States Various individuals, including scholars and sports writers, have commented on the apparent over-representations and under-representations of different races in different sports. African Americans accounted for 75% of players in the National Basketball Association (NBA) near the end of 2008. According to the latest National Consortium for Academics and Sports Equality report card, 65% of National Football League players were African Americans. However, in 2008, about 8.5% of Major League Baseball players were African American, who make up about 13% of the U.S. population, and 29.1% were Hispanics of any race, compared with about 16% of the U.S. population. In 2020, less than 5% of the National Hockey League NHL, players are black or of mixed black heritage. NCAA sports have mirrored the trends present in American professional sports. During the 2005-2006 season, Black males comprised 46.9% of NCAA Football Bowl Subdivision, FBS, and 58.9% of NCAA Division I Basketball. The NCAA statistics show a strong correlation between percentage of black athletes within a sport and the revenue generated by that sport. For example, University of North Carolina's 2007-2008 men's basketball team, the team was 59% black relative to the 3.7% black population of the institution as a whole generated $17,215,199 in revenue, which comprised 30% of the school's athletic revenue for the year. Given NCAA rules prohibiting the payment of players, some have come to see the structure of NCAA athletics as exploitative of college athletes. Some believe that since black athletes comprise a high percentage of athletes in high-revenue college sports, FBS football and Division I men's basketball, they are therefore the biggest losers in this arrangement. 
Billy Hawkins argues that the control over the black male's body and profiting off its physical expenditure is in the hands of white males. His position refers to a very high percentage of Division I universities controlled by white administrations that prosper greatly from the free labor produced by the revenue sports that are heavily populated by black athletes. This claim is substantiated by statistics, such as the 2005-2006 NCAA Division I men's basketball tournament in which games started, and minutes played for black athletes were over double that of their white counterparts, with 68.7% of scoring in the tournament coming from black players. Despite the frequency of such speculation, suggestions of biological differences in athletic ability between racial groups are considered unscientific.